Welcome to Championship Island. On the Western Islands are the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers. On the Eastern Islands are the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs. And in the middle is Super Bowl Island. These teams will be battling in a best of seven series. The winner conquers their island, poaches three players from the losing team, and heads to Super Bowl Island, where of course they will be competing for the biggest prize of all, the Super Bowl trophy. The the very first best of seven series will be the Western Islands. The Detroit Lions headed into San Francisco's territory to determine the winners of the NFC. Now, yes, I am obviously biased, but I can't let that impact the outcome of today. The Lions are an 86 overall. The Niners are a 91. Let's play ball. It's a clear day at Levi's Stadium. Jared Goff. He beat Matthew Stafford, he beat Baker Mayfield, and now he takes on Brock Purdy, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and a stacked Niners roster in their home stadium. On the San Fran side, Brock Purdy, the last overall pick. Everybody doubted this man. And here he is in the NFC Championship. This is NBA rules though. This is a best of seven series. So winning just one game isn't gonna cut it. The first quarter is all San Fran. Detroit's got a field goal. San Fran's got 14. Detroit's got 10. 21-10, 21-13. It's a very high scoring match. Detroit does put a field goal in here. This game is not over. 28 to 20, four minutes left in the fourth quarter, but Detroit's gotta come up with a big stop or San Fran's gonna run this clock out. Brock Purdy with Christian McCaffrey in the backfield. Do they hand this off? They use the entire clock. They are gonna throw deep caught. It's not quite quite the dagger, but it's pretty close. Detroit has three timeouts and the two minute warning, but San Fran just punched their ticket to field goal range. Next up, this might be a handoff from Brock Purdy to Christian McCaffrey. It's not another pass. Risky. <laughs> Brian Branch, don't go celebrating. You should have intercepted that. This also stops the clock. Second and 10 handoff to CMC. The best running back in the league has 14 rushes, 138 yards and touchdown. Oh my God. A Jake Moody field goal puts San Fran up 31 to 20. The Lions got to get down score and get the onside. A nice check down to Sam Laporta. Second and one, really running out of clock. You got to go deep. Amon um, St. Brown on the right with Jamison Williams. Jameer Gibbs in the backfield. It's play action. Goff, you gotta let go of it. He does! End zone! It's caught, but there's a flag! If Jamo went out of the end zone, he can't establish himself back in bounds. Illegal touching. You know what's crazy? I got arrested once for illegal touching. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now the Lions know that they need two possessions. So rather than taking another Hail Mary, they are going to kick this field goal and go for an onside kick. It's a galaxy brain play, but only if you get the onside kick here. Otherwise, the score just looks a little worse. The biggest play of the game, the onside kick, a dribbler easily handled. This game is over. Game one goes to San Francisco. Goff and Purdy both had excellent, very fluid games, but Purdy threw for two touchdowns. Goff only for one. On the ground, the difference maker was Christian McCaffrey in this game. Unstoppable. 15 carries, 136 yards, nine yards per carry, and a huge touchdown. McCaffrey was going crazy. Josh Reynolds had seven receptions, 56 yards. I find this funny because in real life, Josh Reynolds has been amazing in the playoffs and he kind of came out of nowhere. Josh Reynolds was not a big factor in the regular season and it showed up even here. No interceptions, a sack for Nick Bosa and Hargrave and one for Derek Barnes. 1-0 series lead, San Fran. Game two is underway and this one is not high sway. I was saying it's not high scoring and they just started scoring. 10-7 lead for Detroit. This is a low scoring game. Nobody can get in there until San Fran makes it 14-10 in the fourth quarter. Now Detroit has the ball. 23-31 in the first matchup. This one's looking like, I hope you bet the under. A huge drive for the Lions. Goff finds Jamison Williams in bounds. Second and two. Jared Goff over the middle to Sam Laporta. Golf with a very similar stat line, 22 for 27, 240 and a touchdown. But this time they have an opportunity to put this game away, potentially on this final drive, depending on how they use this clock. David Montgomery in the backfield. This time he's going to get the pass here. Does not break the tackle. Second and nine. Goff, check down, caught. Fred Warner's there, but not after six yards. Third and three. Bunch left, two receivers to the right, empty backfield. Jared Goff unloads. 
Cut! I'm so obviously biased. Sorry, guys. <laughs> First time out for Detroit is used. Jared Goff finds Laporta again. It's been all Sam Laporta in these clutch plays here. First and goal, Jared Goff. Oh, Chase Young gets through. Down, Goff goes, and that clock is ticking. Detroit uses their final timeout. Third and goal. They've got two more opportunities. No first downs available. It's a slip screen. What are we calling? And you got to go no huddle. You have to go no huddle. This is the final play of the game. Fourth and goal. You have to go end zone. Come on, Goff. Where are you? Why are you checking down? I'm not biased. I'm not biased. I don't care who wins. I'm not biased. It's fine. Detroit just lost that game. What are we doing, fellas? Brock Purdy completed five passes and got a win. Oh my God. Jared Goff, 29 completions. Brock Purdy, five. Another McCaffrey legacy game, 150 yards on... T oh my goodness. Stop it. Amon Ra, 112 and a tutty. 2-0 series lead goes to the Niners. Game three. If the Lions lose here, this might seal their fate. Seven to zero 10 to zero 10 7 17 7 17 14 the lions make this 17 to 20 and they have the ball they could take the lead here start of the fourth quarter detroit is approaching the red zone down three unloads caught nice work jmo second and six in the red zone handoff david montgomery he shoots <laughs> i was about to say i was gonna say he's down at the one he made it through david montgomery gives detroit the lead can they hang on to it san fran's on the 36 they're down by four and on fourth and one they're trotting jake moody out there i guess they're hoping they can stop detroit once again and get the ball back ironically this is exactly how the rams lost to the lions was not going for it here wow Oh, really? Nope. Nope. Shanahan thought it over at the two minute warning. They are going for it. Handoff. McCaffrey stuffed. I'm not biased at all. And for the first time, this Lions defense is able to contain Christian McCaffrey. And it looks like it might lead to a win. Detroit able to convert a first down, a reception to Sam Laporta. They'll chew this clock out. And that's ball game 24 to 20. Let's sim to the end. I think this is just three QB kneels. It is. Dan Campbell in a very scary 2-0 scenario makes this series 2-1. Brock Purdy with honestly a really solid game once again. Jared Goff's worst game so far, and it resulted in the victory. Here's the difference. David Montgomery was a monster on the ground, and Christian McCaffrey was nowhere near those first two games. So if the Lions can contain McCaffrey, they can win these games. That's definitely the difference maker here. Josh Reynolds putting up a very impressive performance once again. Kittle and Debo were the best for the Niners. <sighs> Moving on to game four, San Fran could take a commanding 3-1 lead. Detroit could tie this up with a lot of momentum. It's 14-10. Now 21 to 10, 21 13, 21 19. This is really going to come down to it. San Fran puts one more in. The Niners have a nine point lead. Detroit has to put in a touchdown here and then stop San Fran on the ensuing drive. Three timeouts, the two minute warning on their side. Second and eight. Let's see what Jared Goff has got. You really don't want to fall to three and one. Unloads deep. Caught instantly, but he's down. The ball was a little bit behind JMO. He had to reverse to get to it. That took him to his knee. This will probably bring up... No, they go no huddle. No two-minute warning used. If they score right here, right now, or incomplete, this will be huge for clock management. Got to score right now. Go for it. Go for it. <sighs> Horrifying pass. Second and goal. Goff checks down. Montgomery, one man to beat. Dragged out of bounds. That's the two-minute warning used. Detroit's on the three. It's going to come down to one defensive stop, but Detroit's got to score the touchdown first. Bunch left. Gibbs in the backfield. <sighs> Quick pass over the middle. Broken up by Drake Greenlaw. Wow. I'm really shocked. With this good of field position, the Lions are going to take a field goal. This does make it a six-point game, but if the Niners get in field goal range now... The game is over. Don't count Detroit out quite yet. San Fran is up by six, and that's Wisnowski. They could not move the ball. They're going to punt it to Detroit right here. So Jared Goff could lead a game-winning drive with one timeout. Turns out the field goal was the right call. First and 10. Lions got one timeout. It's a slip screen. They love the slip screen. 
nine amazing blocks that's a first down to start this out golf and the lions are in no huddle uh, just over a minute left trying to cross the 50 golf another check down i don't know you gotta get a little more yards than that especially with this clock ticking and you gotta get in the end zone down to 45 seconds i don't like this clock management i don't like this at all you need the tutty you need it all Hey, at least that incompletion stops the clock. Jared Goff, we need you to step up right here, right now. Fourth and eight. The game on the line. Play action. Who's going to bite on that? Unloads. Caught. Jamison Williams. End zone. He heard me talking shit. J-Mo gets in, but this game still isn't over. That was an amazing find. The comeback route pulled the zone safety down. J-Mo gets behind him. He's lost in the sauce. And that's a touchdown. Big one. Keep in mind, it is 28 to 28. San Fran has all three timeouts, and there's 26 seconds. PAT is good. Momentum is on Detroit's side. They have a one-point lead, but Brock Purdy's got a couple of throws here and two timeouts to get them in field goal range. This game is not over. Second and 14, Brock Purdy can beat the allegations right here. He can beat the mid-quarterback allegations. Not with a pass like that. That is an inbounds tackle. San Fran forced to use a timeout. Oh, that's big. In case you guys are wondering, I'm recording this before the real life NFC championship. So if you notice any similarities in the games, let me know. Obviously, the Lions are going to beat the Niners in real life, though. It's pretty much a given. Potentially the last play of the game. And they run epic slip screen. Why is everyone so obsessed with slip screen? Oh my God. This game is over. This was undoubtedly Brock Purdy's best game. 19 for 25, four touchdowns, no interceptions. Goff threw an interception, but the Lions still found a way to win this game. And this was by far McCaffrey's worst game. It, it basically, this entire game comes down to Christian McCaffrey. If he goes off, they win. If he lays an egg, they lose. Jamo with a huge game. Juwan Jennings with a huge game. It was Deshaun Gibson with the interception. A crucial game here, all tied up, two games apiece. It's game five. Let's go. Lions are on the board first, 7-0. Now it's all tied up. Now 14-7, now 14-14. A lot of scoring here, 17-14, 24-14, 21-24. The Lions up by three. They burnt all of San Fran's timeouts, but it is third and five. So potentially if San Fran gets the stop here, Lions would have to kick a field goal, make it 27-21, and Brock Purdy would have another chance to lead a game-winning drive, although this one is without any timeouts. The Lions are going for the end zone. And it's caught in the back of the end zone. Jared Goff finds Josh Reynolds, the playoff demon. Oh my God, Lions are on a 3-0 game winning run. Started this best of seven series by losing the first two. I bet you all thought it was over, huh? 31-21 lead, no timeouts for San Fran and 42 seconds, it would take a miracle. Spoiler alert, they did not get the miracle. Dan Campbell and the Lions win game five, take a 3-2 series lead. This was Jared Goff's best game, 25 for 33 touchdowns. Brock Purdy's worst game, never found the end zone. But I gotta say, throughout this entire five game series, Brock Purdy has thrown either zero or one interception. Very impressive by him. J-Mo and Aminra combined for 253 yards. Aminra with two touchdowns. That is a monster game right there. Game five goes to the Lions. Game six. If the Lions win here, they seal it and they head to the final island. And they're starting with a 14-0 lead. That momentum is real. 17-3 lead. 24-3. 31-3. The Lions are smacking the Niners. And it's all over. Oh my God. The Niners actually just lost four straight games. And the Lions Lions are moving on. Goff and Purdy with pretty similar stat lines here, 267, 266. Brock Purdy throws his first interception in the winner go home game. And take a look, Christian McCaffrey. If Christian McCaffrey doesn't go off, they don't win. It really is that simple. Josh Reynolds, another amazing game. Same for Aminra. And the interception from the rookie linebacker out of Iowa, Jack Campbell. Hell yeah. The Lions have conquered the West Island and they move on to the Super Bowl Island where they will await 
either the Baltimore Ravens or the Kansas City Chiefs. And for beating the 49ers, the Lions get to steal three players. Player number one will be Christian McCaffrey. Player number two is Fred Warner. And player number three is George Kittle. Those three players are also now the top three highest overall players on the Lions. McCaffrey, Kittle, Warner. Then it's Panay Sewell, Amonra St. Brown, Frank Rag now, Aiden Hutchinson. Now we head over to the East Islands where the Kansas City Chiefs are headed to Baltimore to take on the 92 overall Ravens. This is going to be an absolute battle in the seven game series. Let's see what these teams are made of. We're at M&T Bank Stadium. Weather shouldn't be a factor. Both of these teams know how to play in the cold. The difference from the East and West Islands is so funny to me. Jared Goff and Brock Purdy, a lot of people don't think they even belong being here. And then on the East Islands, you have two Hall of Fame bound quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Two incredible coaches as well, Andy Reid and Harbaugh. God, I love football, baby. Game one is underway. It's all defense in the first quarter. Ravens are the first to score. Chiefs respond. It's 10 to 7. It's 10 to 14. Ravens are up. Chiefs are now up. Ravens tie it up. Chiefs get a touchdown. The very first game is going to be an excellent one. You got to love that. Baltimore is down by seven points in game one. They've got the ball on the 27 and three timeouts. They absolutely can punch this in, but will they go for two if they get there? Harbaugh's a risky coach. I think he'd do it. Lamar over the middle to Zay Flowers caught. There's a minute 50 on the clock and it is ticking. On the 20, they just got to the red zone. Lamar finds Mark Andrews. Just kidding. That is not Mark Andrews. That is Charlie Kolar, everybody. I do not know ball. Second and two. This is a read option. Lamar keeps it and he gets across the 10. Lamar Jackson with a QB keeper. Now Baltimore wants to use as much clock as they can here because if they score, they got to give the ball back to the Kansas City Chiefs with three timeouts and they go straight to the end zone. Odell Beckham Jr. catches it, but I don't know. You might have given Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs a little too much time. Do you bring out Justin Tucker to tie this game up? Or do you go for two here? Lamar is still on the field. They're determining the game right now. If the Chiefs stop the Ravens, this... Oh, I lied. I'm a fraud. Out comes Justin Tucker. Wow, I really thought they were going to do it. 24 to 24. Baltimore's got all the momentum, but the Chiefs could put this game away right here with a field goal. Interception! What is Kansas City doing? They threw the ball there? <laughs> I was simming because I thought they were going to run it and I was going to check in for the field goal. I think Baltimore might already be in field goal range now. <laughs> Game one is looking like an epic comeback by the Ravens if they can close this out. Luckily, you do have the greatest kicker of all time. So this is almost guaranteed. All right, first and 10. Right over the middle, the Ravens are still passing. <gasps> I take it back. They were not in field goal range. I had my fields flipped. Oh my God, that was so clutch. I thought the Ravens were already in field goal range, but they just got into field goal range. First and 10. This is kind of the equivalent to a victory formation. Ravens are just going to hand this puppy off and take this W here. Hand off to Gus the bus. He's going to get eight yards. That's a KC timeout. 24 to 24. Andy Reid ices Justin Tucker. I got to be honest. I don't think it works on a guy like that. Game one. Decided by this kick. He's the GOAT, man. He's the GOAT for a reason. Baltimore. That was almost blocked. That really was almost blocked. Takes this game by a hair. Lamar, 30 for 41. A lot of passing. Two touchdowns and an interception. Mahomes, one touchdown, two interceptions. Pacheco and Lamar, both with great games on the ground. Travis Kelsey, amazing game. Same for Zay Flowers. And shockingly, Kadarius Tony. Trent McDuffie, Kyle Hamilton, Marlon Humphrey, all with interceptions. Game one in the books. Baltimore takes a one series lead. Let's move on to game two. 14-7, Kansas City. Baltimore responds 17-14. Now 24-14. Now 24-21. Baltimore scores again 31-21. This game is not over though. I just watched the Ravens come back from this. Game two, down 10. Mahomes finds MVS. 
But that clock is still ticking. You got to get in this end zone quick. 28 to 31. Then you've got three timeouts to slow the Ravens, but that's a sack. A corner blitz off the edge. Mahomes goes down with the clock ticking. That was massive. Third and goal. Mahomes, you got to go end zone right here, right now. He does. Comes in clutch to Kadarius Tony, who does catch it. That was wild. This will be 28-31. Now you got to stop the Ravens. And they stop the Ravens on third and inches. They TFL Lamar Jackson down by three. Patrick Mahomes with no timeouts has an opportunity to get them in field goal range, send this game to overtime, or maybe even score a touchdown. Whoa. Whoa. I take it back. Baltimore wants to end it right now. Lamar is out there. Fourth and two. Hand off Edwards. He's got it. And more. Oh my God. Is he going to score? <laughs> What's crazy about that is that's actually the wrong play. If Gus Edwards slides down, two QB kneels and the game's over. But just to rub it in, Gus Edwards punches this in. And the Ravens on fourth and two take a 10 point lead. That was so ballsy. Holy shit. This ball game ends 38 to 28. And if you're getting deja vu or you're a concerned Chiefs fan, just remember that the San Francisco 49ers took a 2 0 lead on the Lions. And now the Ravens have a 2 0 lead on the Kansas City Chiefs, 38 to 28. Mahomes and Lamar put on master classes. Look at these games. 430 yards, three touchdowns. Lamar, 280 and three touchdowns. Baltimore dominates the ground game. Baltimore gets the win. Gus Edwards, obviously, with that insanely clutch run there at the end. Let's head to game three where Kansas City really needs to find themselves a win. They start with a touchdown here, 7-0. Make it 14-0. Don't make it 21-0. Baltimore's on the board. And another 14 to 10, now 14 17 now 14 24 oh my god we gotta we gotta check in here baltimore looking to take a 3-0 series lead utterly dominating the kansas city chiefs i don't know if you guys watch or play a lot of madden simulation but in madden simulation kansas city is so overpowered because their playbook is so good and yet i'm about to watch them fall three straight games there's some big third inches to churn this clock guess who gus edwards every single time they get the inch i think this game is over Kansas City is out of timeouts. They have the two-minute warning. Baltimore needs one more first down to truly end this game, but they can still milk so much of this clock even without it. Kansas City's in a bad spot. Kansas City couldn't stop them. 27 to 21. These are great games, but Baltimore keeps edging it out. Lamar, another three touchdowns, zero interception game. Mahomes did throw one interception this game, and that was definitely the difference maker. Nelson Aguilar, eight for 125 and two touchdowns. Who got the INT? It was Brandon Stevens. Matabuike had two sacks, one for Karlaftis. Odafe Owe coming up with a half one. Wow. We move on to game four, where I'm concerned that we're getting the brooms out. Kansas City starts with a touchdown. And another. They started last game just like this. Then Baltimore put up 17 uncontested. Not this time. Kansas City is not going down without a fight. 24 to 14. 24 to 21. Baltimore just entered the red zone. Oh boy. This isn't even about winning the seven game series. This this is about pride. If you're Kansas City, you do not want to get swept. Lamar, clean pocket, unloads, end zone, caught! <laughs> That's Isaiah Likely. Lamar loves Isaiah Likely. At the start of this, I was talking about Mark Andrews. Of course, Mark Andrews is injured. Also, a very big PAT here puts Baltimore up by four. So Kansas City is looking for a touchdown or they're headed to Cancun. Here we go. 24-28. Mahomes finds Rishi Rice. About seven yards there. Kansas City could perfectly use this clock, though. Score with no time left and just end this game here. Avoid the sweep and give themselves a chance to come back down 3-0. Huge completion there. Kansas City potentially scoring too fast here. Probably want to get a little more clock out of this. Mahomes up the middle. He dives <laughs> Mahomes. They kicked the PAT and now Baltimore's got a chance to send this into overtime or just win the game outright. Lamar finds. I think that's Zay Flowers. It is. They've got a timeout. Do they use it? It looks like they did. No, they're hanging on to their timeout. They want the end zone. 2019, 18. Snap the ball. Lamar, end zone. Oh, 
He had him. And now it looks like they're just gonna gear up for the field goal. This looks like a handoff to me. Use their timeout and kick the field goal. Yeah, that's exactly what they're gonna do. Gus is gonna take five. Justin Tucker drills it. We're going into overtime. Kansas City Chiefs start with the ball in overtime. Our first overtime matchup. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if Madden Simulation accurately does the NFL overtime rules. Remember that NFL regular season overtime rules are where the first team to score a touchdown wins, but playoff rules, each team gets an opportunity. That's how it is in real life. I'm not exactly sure what Madden is gonna give us here. I'm saying all that assuming Kansas City scores, but they gotta score first. 31 to 31. Clean pocket. Oh no! That dude, that DB blitz off the edge from Baltimore is lethal. It's lethal. Mahomes. Fourth and 19. I think they have to punt. Maybe Butker can hit 57. I don't know what they do here. They're going for the deep field goal. This means that Baltimore is getting an opportunity with the ball no matter what. And my shit just crashed. My game crashed on the kick. Not only did Harrison Butker miss, but he missed short. He missed so short that Justice Hill returned it. I think. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not entirely sure what just happened, but dude, I gotta give it to Mahomes though. Mahomes has been playing amazing. I just think the Ravens have a better all around squad, which is honestly a blessing because Lamar Jackson has been fighting for his life in Baltimore. And I finally think they've got him a worthy team of his talents. This one's a handoff to Gus Edwards. That's, get him out. Get him out! Honestly, that's kind of like ball don't lie because it wouldn't have mattered if the Butker field goal was made. Ravens just walked the touchdown in. It'd be ball game the same either way. Wow, Justice Hill just kind of took this game over. That's a clean sweep for Baltimore. I did not expect that. I thought Kansas City was going to walk away with this. Mahomes ends 24 for 40 and a touchdown. Lamar 27 for 34. Four passing touchdowns, 325 yards. He, he's insane. So on the East Island, it's Baltimore. Absolutely clean. Cleaning up the Kansas City Chiefs, not letting Mahomes breathe. And they advance well rested to the Super Bowl Island. They only had to play four games. And for winning their series, the Baltimore Ravens will be poaching Travis Kelsey, Chris Jones, and Isaiah Pacheco. And this leads us all to Super Bowl Island, where the Detroit Lions will be taking on the Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. Once again, this will be a best of seven series. The Lions now have McCaffrey, Kittle, Fred Warner, as well as Penae Sewell, Amon Ruff, Frank Ragnow, Aiden Hutchinson, CJ, GJ, Brian Branch, Jameer Gibbs, Laporta, Goff. And they'll be taking on a stacked Ravens team with Travis Kelsey, Lamar Jackson, Chris Jones, Roquan Smith, Marlon Humphrey, Justin Tucker, Kyle Hamilton, and now Isaiah Pacheco. The entire Detroit Lions top three is completely different. And the Ravens have added Kelsey and Chris Jones up there too. You'll also notice that the overalls are different. When you actually reorder the depth chart and they factor in injuries, it takes the overalls to where they're actually supposed to be. So this is an 81 overall Lions team taking on an 84 Ravens team. Allegiant Stadium, we are in Las Vegas to see Jared Goff, CMC, and Aminra take on Lamar. Jackson, Zay Flowers, Isaiah Pacheco, and Travis Kelsey. The Lions are running out. Jared Goff taking it all in. This is not Jared Goff's first time in the Super Bowl, but it is his first time as a Detroit Lion. For Lamar, it's his first time ever. I'm so glad it panned out this way because this is exactly the Super Bowl matchup that I hope to see. It's a seven game series. Game one is underway. Ravens will start with the football. Here we go. Ravens start with three. Lions start with six. Ravens score a touchdown. Lions put up two quick ones and a field goal and another. It's 26 to 13, 26 to 20. First and 10. Lions ball 26, 20. That's a handoff McCaffrey, but he's swallowed up. Third and five. Baltimore's got no timeouts. A conversion here might be the game. That's to George Kittle and he caught it. And with no timeouts left, Detroit wins the Super Bowl, but they haven't won quite yet. They take a 1-0 series lead. The confetti's exciting, but we ain't done yet. Game two is underway. Lions have a 1-0 series lead. It's 7-6, now 14-6. 14-13. Kickers are missing PATs. 20-13, 23-13. No way the Lions are really going to do this. 30 7 to 20. There's nothing to check in on. That was all Detroit. 
37 to 27, Detroit's got a 2-0 series lead. <laughs> Dude, you give Detroit Fred Warner, you give him George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey and... Yeah, shit, I mean, you give any team those three guys and you could probably make a run. Lamar is struggling against this defense. Only one touchdown, Jared Goff, three. On the ground, Pacheco had 58 and two. McCaffrey, 59 and two. Lamar had one on the ground. Best receiver today was Zay Flowers. Amon Ra had two touchdowns on three catches. 2-0 series lead. All right, 7-0 Baltimore. Now 10-0 Baltimore. Baltimore. They've got life left. 17 to 7, 17 to 14, 21 17. Down by four. The Ravens have to punch. So the Ravens have to stop Detroit on this drive right here, or they're going to fall. They're going to fall the 3 0 just like Kansas City did. Here's a huge play for Baltimore's defense. Third and 10. 10 yards to go. Slip screen sacked. Dude, what is with the halfback slip screen obsession? I mean, you got McCaffrey now, but still fourth and 18. Horrible play there. Baltimore is going to get this ball back. This is the biggest drive of game three. Second and 15. A touchdown takes the lead. A field goal does you no good. Check down to OBJ. He has certainly been here before. Now third and six after the two-minute warning. Both teams with all timeouts. You got to at least make this a manageable fourth down. You don't got to get all of it. But you gotta make it manageable. And they still get all of it. That was a huge conversion on the hitch. Baltimore does not want to fall three games. First and goal, you could use the whole clock. Punch in a touchdown here. Let's see what they do. Motions over Travis Kelsey. Hand off Gus Edwards. He's fighting! Ooh. But Brian Branch steps up and lays a huge hit on Pacheco to keep him out of the end zone. Baltimore is on the one yard line. Second and goal. It's a pass. Now third and goal. With how good the Ravens run game is, I'm really shocked to see a pass there. Maybe they were going for the shock factor? I don't know. That was a Pete Carroll ass play call. They throw again! I guess I don't know ball, because this one is a touchdown to Odell Beckham Jr. 24-21 lead. Detroit's got 50 seconds and three timeouts to make this happen. Michael Badgley is going to come out here. He gets iced. This is the biggest kick of his life. It's a 51-yard field goal in game three to send this game into overtime. Michael Badgley, huge kick. It's up! It's good! 24 to 24, we're going into overtime. Baltimore starts with the ball. Detroit holds Baltimore to a field goal on their opening drive. So a Detroit touchdown wins this game. Not too much going for Detroit here right now. You need a big conversion right here. It's a slip screen! They're obsessed with the slip screen! Christian McCaffrey makes it fourth and two. Do the Lions go for this? Or do they tie? I wouldn't tie this up. I don't know if I agree with this play call. So, overtime rules. If they make this kick, now all Baltimore needs to win in overtime is another field goal. Whereas you have the opportunity to win this game in the touchdown, Dan Campbell would never kick this shit. Fourth and two, Michael Badgley has been money so far. He's still money. All right, it's 27 to 27 at the end of the first OT period in game three on Super Bowl Island. But Detroit may concede this game here. The Ravens are in field goal range. Really, they shouldn't be running any more plays. They should just kick it, and that's ball game. Here comes Justin Tucker. This is the smart play call, and the best of all time. It's gonna drill it right down the middle. Ravens are on the board. Lamar, another amazing game. When Lamar has a really good game, Baltimore's winning. His last two games have been trash. Three touchdowns, but still an interception. On the ground, he almost had 100 yards on 18 carries. Pacheco, they carried the ball 35 times? No, they carried the ball 40 times. 40 rushes in that game. And they got the dub 2-1. Let's head to game four. Baltimore starts with seven. Another seven is 14. Detroit's in the end zone. Detroit's in the end zone again. It's 21 to 14 after half. Lions tied it up 21 to 21. Third and one for Detroit. Hand off CMC. Ooh, he barely got that. Detroit could take the 3-1 series lead here if they play this well. McCaffrey! 15 rushes, 71 yards and a touchdown. Looking to hopefully get two here. Second and three. Brock Wright in motion looking like a right side handoff to McCaffrey it is he squeezes through and gets a push that's first and goal another handoff McCaffrey this one takes him to the two yard line handoff here to McCaffrey he can't get in 
stuffed on the goal line by that Baltimore defense, but this will tick 40 seconds off the clock. You just got to go one more handoff, right, Detroit? Handoff, McCaffrey, end zone. I'm unbiased. I don't care who wins. Touchdown for the Detroit Lions. Wow, it would be cool if they went up 3-1, but also I don't care. Baltimore can't do it. That's a 28-21 victory for the Lions. Dude, the addition of McCaffrey is such an unbelievable addition. Fred Warner and Kittle also obviously are amazing, but McCaffrey continues to put up crazy numbers every single game. 28 to 21, Lamar, solid game, but another interception. Goff with two touchdowns. McCaffrey on the ground had two touchdowns, 83 yards. He even added five receptions, 50 yards, in a receiving touchdown. That is a hat trick for Chris McCaffrey in the Super Bowl. JMO added another touchdown, and Travis Kelsey was amazing, but it's officially win or go home in game five for the Baltimore Ravens. In the first quarter, Baltimore starts with a touchdown, potentially adds another 14-0. Detroit can't score, and it's 21-0 in the first half. Baltimore is dominating. Detroit finally gets on the board. Baltimore responds, and this game is looking out of reach already. Utter dominance. Baltimore's not going anywhere. 28 to seven. Baltimore just sucked the wind out of the sails. Oh my goodness. That was a huge game. Lamar, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jared Goff just couldn't get anything going. Christian McCaffrey is boxed like a fish and only JMO could really get any yards in the air. It's a 3-2 series. Baltimore hangs on. Game six kicks off. It's 3-7. to seven. Now 10-7 to seven Baltimore. Now 17-7 Baltimore. Lions get 14-17. 21-17. Wait a minute. Haven't we seen this score a few times? It is 21-17. Detroit has a four-point lead. It's game six. It is still win or go home for Baltimore, but they're in the red zone. They can keep the dream alive. Lamar, clean pocket, finds Mark Andrews, who bowls someone over and into the end zone. Did Mark Andrews just come out from his injury? Wait a minute. The Ravens have Kelsey and Mark Andrews now? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Dude, I was just in the depth chart and I saw his injury. He hasn't played like any snaps and he just decides to come in, lay the fucking hammer and get in the end zone while injured. It's 24-21, Baltimore's got the lead. This game ain't over though. It's first and 10, now second and three. George Kittle makes a huge catch. Detroit's in the red zone. Both teams got their timeouts. So Detroit, they punch this in. Baltimore will still have three timeouts to get in field goal range. But if Detroit gets stuffed here, they'll take the field goal and just send it to OT. Wait a minute. No, if Detroit scores, it'll be 28-24. It'll force the Ravens to score a touchdown. This might be it. The Lions could win both series in six games. Hand this shit off to McCaffrey. Just give it to him. No. Pass interference on the defense. The Lions get a reset. It's first and goal on the one. You better hand that shit to Christian McCaffrey or I'm actually going to cry. It's game six. Just end it. No. What are you doing? Are we all Pete Carroll? Do we just want to lose? Hand that shit off to your new 99 overall running back. I don't care how many are in the box. Give it to him. Jerry Goff. No, you're losing yards. You're going the wrong way. I can't watch. I can't watch this shit. They're not even going to use their timeout. They're going to let this clock go. What the fuck are we doing? We have two timeouts. Snap it. Play action. Goff. The field goal's good. What are we doing? Holy shit, fourth and goal. We're going to kick a field goal now. Detroit, you 100% deserve to lose. Yeah. Oh my God. Game six. With six plays within the five, we get negative three yards and we're going for a field goal. Could just hand that shit off at any point. Oh my God. I can't watch. We're actually going to a seven game series in the bowl. I can't watch. Oh, I shouldn't say that. There's an entire overtime period to make up for it. It is 24 to 24. Michael Badgley drills it. Detroit starts with the ball in overtime. <laughs> and McCaffrey breaks off a 58-yard rushing touchdown. The extra point is good, but this is the Super Bowl, so Baltimore is going to get an opportunity of their own. They need the touchdown and the PAT to go into another period of overtime, or a touchdown and a two-point conversion to win game six and force game seven. The Ravens are on their heels, but don't count them out. Let's see what Lamar's got on first and ten in overtime. Checks down to Gus Edwards. Swallowed up by Malcolm Rodriguez. Put 
putting on for all of Mexico. Second and 10. Lamar steps up. Lamar B. Slides down, tripped forward. Third and inches. Gus Edwards swallowed up. CJ Gardner Johnson has been playing amazing defense. That's a huge stop right there. If Baltimore can't get this yard, it's all over and the Super Bowl goes to Detroit. This is the biggest play of the island. Fourth and one, handoff, Gus. He's got it. Not even CJ Gardner Johnson and Fred Warner could stop that man right now. Oh, that was Isaiah Pacheco. That was not Gus, my bad. Regardless, it's first and 10. Travis Kelsey is in. Lamar! Intercepted! Intercepted by Emmanuel Mosley! The play of the game, the MVP in game six to send Baltimore home is Emmanuel Mosley of all people. Our Super Bowl ceremony is ruined by the fact that there are play selections on the field. Hold up, wait a minute. What is going on? What am I watching? The Super Bowl's over. In game six, honestly, the QBs played virtually the same. Well, the same QBR, very different stories. Jared Goff, 276 and a touchdown. Lamar, three touchdowns, but two interceptions. And honestly, it was Lamar Jackson's interceptions that sent Baltimore home in the end. He was averaging about an interception per game. Pacheco was 75 on the ground. Jackson was 76. You'd think that would be enough. But Christian McCaffrey, 13 carries, 115 and two touchdowns. You can't mess with that efficiency. Brian Branch, Manuel Mosley with interceptions. Game six goes to Detroit and they are the sole winners of the Super Bowl Island. All right, boys, this was an absolute blast to make. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to take a little twist on imperialism, put my little MMG sauce on it. You know, that sounded a little sus, but you know what I'm saying. All right, boys, I love you guys. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.